It's heavy, built like an absolute tank, and has its very own carrying handle. This Getac P470 rugged notebook was only $55 on eBay. So, the question is, was it worth the purchase price? Let's find out. For a laptop released in early 2008, it's odd that it came pre-installed with Windows XP Pro, instead of Windows Vista. In hindsight, that is actually a good thing. We'll try installing Windows 7 on it a bit later in the video. Also, stick around for some durability tests to see how strong this laptop really is. The main selling point of this laptop was the super tough magnesium alloy casing. The whole system feels reassuringly ready for whatever you've got to throw at it. Whether it's the super hard casing, the spill-proof keyboard, or the shock-mounted internal components, you could feel safe knowing this machine wasn't going to let you down. I can tell you this, I wasn't expecting the laptop to arrive as dirty as it appeared on the eBay listing. It had definitely seen some serious use over the last 8 to 9 years. Once cleaned off, it was actually in pretty good condition, minus a few broken port covers of course. Yes, most of the ports are actually shielded from dust and dirt, which is good to see. Compared alongside a fairly standard HP laptop of the same era, the Getac isn't actually that much thicker. However, the design definitely makes the Getac look a lot older. As far as weight goes, these two laptops feel about the same. The HP has a slightly bigger screen though. Compared against the T-Bow cheap and thin laptop, the difference in dimensions is night and day. When it comes to portability, you'll find that this thing is quite heavy, which is to be expected. Thankfully, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, it has a strong carrying handle, similar to Apple's clamshell iBooks. I was also surprised to get well over one and a half hours of battery life out of this old laptop. The 14-inch 1280x800 touchscreen display, yes, it does actually have a touchscreen, is adequately bright and easily visible outdoors. So, how does it perform? In theory, really well. It has an Intel Core 2 Duo T7200 CPU clocked at 2GHz, a dedicated 256MB ATI Radeon X1350 graphics processor, 2GB of DDR2 RAM, and a 120GB hard drive that is sadly slow as molasses with read and write speeds around 30MB a second. As said, in theory this should be able to run basic games like Minecraft with ease. However, due to problems with software, it can't for some reason. Installing a new operating system should remedy this, as Windows XP is becoming unsupported by many different games and software. Thankfully, installing older games such as Star Wars Battlefront 2, no, not the new one. I installed the old one, which is the good one, and it plays absolutely fine. Running a much older version of Cinebench shows that this machine definitely isn't very powerful, and the OpenGL test just didn't work at all. However, web browsing and watching YouTube videos in HD was perfectly fine, as was the typing experience. The keys have plenty of travel and a good tactile feeling. The trackpad was okay, definitely not great. On the sides, there is basically every port you're going to need, with the addition of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, making this machine surprisingly usable during the making of this video. Unscrewing the panel on the base of the laptop reveals the RAM, Wi-Fi card, and CPU cooling solution. I also noticed that there was some corrosion around the keyboard water drainage pipe. I'm guessing this laptop had seen a bit of water during its life. I cleaned all that off with a small amount of eucalyptus oil. So, are there any downsides? Well, aside from the software limitations and older hardware, well, the heat that comes out the side vent is uncomfortably hot. Aside from that, it's a pretty all-round solid machine. Now, let's put in a faster hard drive and install Windows 7. I had this 120GB SSD lying around. Taking out the original drive, we can see it looks like it would definitely survive a fall from a considerable height. I believe it spun at 4700 RPM, hence why it was so slow. So, the SSD is in, and it doesn't work. I actually had suspected this, but now I know for sure. So, on to plan B. Since I had a busted Lenovo lying around, I thought I would salvage its hard disk. From memory, it was a 500GB 5400 RPM drive, which should be a lot faster than the one in it. The Lenovo was really easy to open up and get the drive out. So yes, it indeed is a 500GB Seagate laptop thin hard disk. Upon doing a bit of research, I found out that it was indeed a 5400 RPM drive. 
Still, a big improvement over the original drive. With the new drive in, it was recognized straight away. Unsurprisingly, whatever OS was originally on there does not boot. So, with the help of our handy Windows 7 Pro USB, I installed Windows 7. After finally selecting the correct boot device, we were off. I wiped the hard disk and let Windows 7 install. About half an hour later, it was up and running. After a few driver updates, it was ready to do some testing. Minecraft ran absolutely fine, with a frame rate hanging around 48 FPS, which is totally playable. CSGO only managed around 6 FPS on low at 1280x800. This could be due to the graphics drivers, but I ain't digging around for drivers due to ATI's lack of driver support. And Cinebench still didn't work properly, sadly. Thankfully, the laptop did basic tasks absolutely fine still. So, I think it's time to put this laptop's durability to the test. Let's see just how strong this laptop is. I've got my phone recording at 120 FPS for some slow motion replays. As we can see, these are some quite substantial drops, and after a few drops I decided to power on the laptop. Unsurprisingly, it still works great, and the hinge is also unaffected. So if you're in the market for a super cheap, very durable, while still functional laptop, this one would be great. And if you can find one as cheap as I did, I would highly recommend it. Thanks so much for watching, on screen are some of my other recent videos. If you've enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.